Okay, so this is just another update video just to let you know where I'm at, what I'm up to, and what's going on with the channel. So what you'll see here straight away is that the 101 Hero 3D printer is actually working, which is great. Um, I have already done a test print and I've got the little gas there from Minecraft. Unfortunately, the Yoohoo glue that I use did a job too good and it snapped off the bed. So one of the things that I'm gonna be doing in the future is make sure I've got a spatula so I can actually get that off the bed a lot easier. Now this is without issue. I mean, uh, it is with issues, I should say. There's problems with the retraction and quite a few other things there. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I would have to get into the settings and actually figure out and tweak this machine just a little bit better. So first 3D prints are coming off. You can see the time-lapse footage now, and it doesn't look too bad at all. Again, this isn't a $500 printer, it's a $50 printer, so you can only get so much out of it. However, with a little bit of tweaking, I reckon you can get some pretty good prints out of this. So stick around and we'll see if I can get something a little bit better out of this cheap printer. The next thing I wanted to touch on was this, Yoohoo Glue. I've mentioned it before in a few other comments, but I thought I'd mention it in this video. If you are looking for a really good adhesive for your bed, whether it's heated or just a plain glass bed like that, doesn't matter, Yoohoo Glue will work. Now, it has to be Yoohoo Glue. The reason being is that there's some sort of chemical that they use in it that actually works, whereas the other ones, I've tried blue sticks, uh, I've tried a few other glue sticks, and for whatever reason, they just don't work. Even the different brands, oh sorry, the different um, colors of Yoohoo don't work. It needs to be the original yellow. So if you are looking for something other than uh, the painter's tape or ABS slurry mix, then that's what I'd recommend is the Yoohoo glue. The next thing I wanted to touch on was what I record with because some people aren't actually aware and I just wanted to show that here. So this is the H4N Pro. So this is the recorder that actually records the audio. I also have a feed going there straight back into the camera, just as a secondary precaution. I can see there that I'm recording at the moment at least. Um, I'm using a battery backup. So you can use normal AA batteries. However, I just find it a lot easier to use a battery bank. So all of this is getting recorded through the lavalier mic and that's the Rode Smart Lab Plus. It is designed for smartphones and you can use it for that. However, I find I get better recordings from the H4N Pro. The only difference is that you need this little adapter cable to take it from the TRR, TRRS signal into a normal headphone, sorry, normal microphone to the input. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was that I am working on a tool at the moment, which is a YouTube search engine tool which will actually go out there and find keywords that have search volume and also give you a list of what keywords videos are listed for. Now what I mean by that is say for example you googled Raspberry Pi, it would give you the top 20 results and from those top 20 results it would also tell you for those videos what keywords they were ranked for other than Raspberry Pi. So this is different from any other tool that I've found out there because it doesn't actually, there isn't a tool out there that tells you what keywords the video ranks for. It tells you the keywords that that person has used, but not what keywords that video in particular is ranking for. The other thing that this tool will do is it will actually tell you what search volume a particular keyword might have. Now, there are tools out there that claim to have this feature. However, all they use is the Google Keyword Planner or Google Search Tools. So this isn't completely accurate because YouTube is its own environment. It's, it is its own search engine. And the algorithm that I've developed actually works and figures out what the search volume just for YouTube is. So the reason I'm mentioning that here is because I will be opening up a beta of this in about a month or two. Again, just like anything, quick Kickstarters and so forth, things get delayed and I can't guarantee that it's gonna be a month or two. However, I thought I would open up the floodgates right now 
and just see who is interested in this sort of tool. So if you are, I put a link down in the description. Make sure you go over there and sign up to let me know that you're interested. So next on the agenda is this right here. Now this is a laser cut map from Game of Thrones. So you might be asking, well, what has that got to do with the channel? Well, nothing really, but it's something that I'm gonna throw up on the wall and I just wanted to show it off because it's, it's really cool. So after that, the next thing is this little tool here. Now what this is, this will be a cluster of Raspberry Pis. And what I'll be using it for is for folding at home projects, just to see how much computing power four Raspberry Pi 3s could actually have. And the beauty of this project is that it's pretty much self-contained. The only thing that will be needed is an ethernet cable to a router and a power cable for the six port USB adapter. So the difference with this is that the switch itself is actually USB powered. All the Raspberry Pis will grab their power from the six port USB power adapter and it will deliver 2.4 amps for each Raspberry Pi. So there's no chance of it actually get, not getting enough power. So again, that's another project that I am working on and it's another sneak peek, sneak peek, but it is coming along and as soon as it is done, I will show that off on this channel. And the next thing that I've got here is a couple of smart plugs. Now I'm already using smart plugs in my studio slash office here at the moment. So you can see this light here or control from the mobile phone. However, it's using their proprietary software. So what I'm going to be investigating is by using these particular smart plugs, being able to hack them and use them with open source software instead. So the beauty of that is that you have more control over what they do and so forth. And being an IoT device, they are susceptible to hacking and so forth. So I just wanna see how secure I can make it using my own software to control them. Well, that's about it for this update. I just wanted to get those couple of things out there because I've had a few people in the comments asking about the print quality on this uh, 101 Hero 3D printer and the other projects that I've got installed. So why not sum it up into this little vlog video? And with that said, I've got tons of projects upcoming. It's just a matter of finding the time. And with a full-time job, it is hard to find the time to be able to do these projects, but I'm trying to achieve as many of them as possible. So stick with the channel, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon. So that way you get notified whenever I do release a new video. And as always, imagine, learn, create.